Hi, I'm John Anstis. I'm a poet. And I live in Hackney. And here we are on the beautiful Hackney Downs, just up the road from where I live. And this is a poem that I wrote one night sitting on a park bench here on Hackney Downs. Hackney Downs in May. Birds are coming back to town. Crows scan from the state gables, swooping, seeking spring fledglings. A yellow-billed gull floats across the downs, riding airstreams, offering, diving to scoop discarded orange peel. Picture book clouds in cinema sky, a cyclorama studying the flight of plane trees. One sentinel opened the stands of my A boy Click. He turned, leaned against the kitchen sink, smiled, an image caught in a flash, a brief exposure the lens loved. Seventeen to seventy one. This poem was written for an event at the Whitechapel Gallery in London, uh, curated by Richard Tyron Jones. It was all about prime numbers. 17 to 71, and I was 71 at the time. At 17, eyes bright and strong, hair full and long, freckles glow in the sun, life a full on scene. 17 to 71, with all that goes between, progress of decline, athletic, arthritic, amnesic, some prime redefined, geriatric chaos. Time. Resonant memories filter from the margins, trickling a mixture of diluted substances. Time does not stand still. Words echo, splinter across pages. A dissonance of death risk music slices the come round, the unmined colliery of the brain, that tittle tattle tip, grinds the winding wheel of habit, winching up slow burning ideas. Beached, the trickling hourglass will not turn again, the ticking clock winding down, Flagging footsteps, a stumbling gait. Silicon shifts, time lapse, slow motion, stop, up, up, bing. Are we there yet? Forgotten the name? Where was that place? What was the name? What did you say? What is the next line? What did I say? Is there a next line? What is the time? What was his name? Where was that place? What is the last line? When were we? Are we there yet? Plain songs, one to five. These are the short poems that started the whole process that led to this book. I wanted to achieve putting ideas down with simple language. One, met a stranger, 
a knowing stranger, embraced, not straight-laced. Ease and excitement clashed, erotic symbols crashed, cerebral connectors coupled, instructing instinct, met a stranger, a knowing stranger. Two, erotic excitements in dark places, enticing glances, sultry dances, guiltless pleasure, lurid chances, edgy time-lapsed love, severed the legs of lies. Three, the road travelled with purpose not straight, guided through dark alleys, open spaces, with self-nav assurance. Dancing, singing, crying, laughing, discovery of wide-eyed independence, in a clearing, a congregation of wanderers. Four, finding an awkward acceptance, away indulgent anarchy, overthrowing self-tyranny, bottled anger, passive forbearance, indifferent tolerance, worded in wooden words. Five, a seam of insight Mining imagination's geology, a shaft sunk into desire, quarrying the love load. My lovely character person has brought me a glass of wine. This poem is called A Kavafi Moment. C.V. Cavafia is one of my favourite poets. His very observant poems about life in the early years of the 20th century of being a gay man in Alexandria, repressed to a certain extent, but sort of happy in himself observing young men getting off with each other. This poem is called A Cavafi Moment. It happened in a supermarket in Islington. He had a chin-fringed soft black beard, black-rimmed glasses that suited, and softly smiled as he packed my bag. When I paid and thanked him, he smiled again, softly, and winked. I like to think conspiratorially. As I've already mentioned C.P. Cavafy, I've written a couple of poems that reference a poem of his. The poem he wrote was two young men, 23 to 24 years old, which he observed in a cafe. This one I have written as 1910 in an imagined Alexandrian cafe. Two young men, 24 to 26, talked intensely. Their suits, second or even third hand, slightly crumpled, not cared for by servants. They worked as very junior clerks in the counting houses of cotton merchants, oppressed by conformist overseers. When they met in the builded hall, they knew with a look a wary remark, a coy smile, that they would be together. Later in the cafe, as they talked, scheming how to meet again, an old poet watched and smiled. The second one of these poems brings us up to 1965. I came to London in 1964 and headed straight for the King's Road, Chelsea. So this poem is called 1965 in a King's Road, Chelsea pub. Two young men, 24 and 26, 
floppy collared shirts and now fashionable fairs eyed each other in a Chelsea pub. The older one spoke first. The younger one said he was new in town, had just moved into the area. The older one teased him as being trendy. Why not? replied the younger. Where do you live? he asked. Round the corner, the older laughed. They were seen in the pub all that week together. Then things moved on. Both had new boyfriends, but they always had a laugh when they saw each other on the scene. Seventh Age Plus Diminished energy, restricted output, producing less, no longer a turn on, deactivated, the power cut off, Disconnected from the grid, mothballed. Redundant, ready for recycling. Take the choice bits, pass them on. Gone nuclear, no alarms sound as atoms split. The all clear goes, disintegration. In April 1999, a madman placed bombs in Brick Lane, in Brixton, attacking people of colour, and in the Admiral Duncan pub in Soho, in London, a gay pub, a very busy gay pub. It uh, killed a number of people and injured a huge number of people, including uh, one of the people who died was a pregnant young woman there supporting her friends. And this is a poem I wrote a week or so later in Soho, sitting in a coffee shop opposite the pub. And it's called People Come and Go. In Old Compton Street, a painted wall hoards building scars and rubble. A police control trailer Stand sentinel for those still troubled. People come and go. Smart denim man with ponytail silver hair. A muscled Mary with just Jim smile. My brother calls hello brother while people come and go. At a street table sits an acquaintance. We speak in that tentative way you greet someone you know but don't want, really want to meet. People come and go. A feral angel glides by with blonde rasta locks shaved at the sides. A subversive sexual echo warrior blitzing the glitz. People come and go. Routine disorder is restored. Late morning bustle a place to hustle. There is no tolling of the bell. People come and go.